science and Islam, are they the same? Are they in unison? What's the difference? People tend to say like, I'm not really religious, I just believe in science. And the older I got, the more I understood how crazy this might seem. Because science and Islam actually coincide beautifully. And I'll give you a bunch of reasons as to why. First and foremost, Islam encourages science. It encourages knowledge. It encourages you to learn information. It wants you to be intelligent. It wants you to go after it. Learn as much as you can learn. And this is something that Islam promotes. Did you know that most of these inventions, like algebra, algebra, was invented by a Muslim? The first universities were made by Muslims. They created universities, they created math, they created the English number system that we see, the Arabic numerals. So in Islam, as Muslims, they're knowledgeable, they're creating science, they're part of it. So it makes you wonder and think, wait, so they have to coincide. And here are some reasons as to how. Within the Quran, it literally talks about the embryo and it talks about the stages of development from when it's a, a sperm, a semen, into the baby, and it talks about that. It even talks about things like the way it looks and the hadiths that talk about, it's almost like a chewed piece of gum. And you, see, you start to think like, you look at the picture in picture, and you're like, that kind of makes a lot of sense. That's interesting. Even in the Quran, it talks about the Big Bang. It talks about the universe. In the Quran, it says that the universe is ever expanding. But science had only figured it out years and years and years later. How did a man in the desert know this? Obviously, it's through prophetic messages from Allah. Allah had given Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that message, and it's in the Quran. And again, the Quran is unchanged after all those years. So there has to be some sort of miracle that's happening within the Quran. Another thing is that the water is a source of all life, or that humans are made out of clay. And you learn this within the Quran as well. So the more and more I started learning about science and learning about things that were in the Quran and science, I started to ponder and wonder, wait, this is really cool. Like there is so much connection here that is happening and we kind of take it for granted. Another really cool thing is said that mountains are like pegs and stabilizers. And when you learn about tectonic plates, you learn that mountains are theoretically from inside of the earth and they're actually connected to the plates and it's actually stabilizing the earth, it's stabilizing that region. And it's interesting to see that mountains as pegs and when you look at a mountain, it looks like a peg because it's going inside of the earth and out. So it's kind of cool to see like, wait a minute, how did a man in the desert 1400 years ago know all of these answers? There has to be truth behind it at some level, some degree, logically. And again, in Islam, it is seen to be logical. It says, don't just believe. People say like, oh, just believe and believe and just shut up and listen. But no, Islam says the opposite. It says, make sure you believe and believe with logic and reason. It's not just about believing. You have to believe with logic and understanding. And there has to be scientific reason as to why you believe. Logical reason as to why you believe. Even when it comes to celestial bodies, the moon, the sun. And again, it talks about this in the Quran that things move in an orbit. So again, it describes science even more. So then you start to think and wonder, hold up, there's so many of these little scenarios that are happening. Even within the Quran, there's so many little things that I read and I'm just like, wow, that's so miraculous. Even when it talks about the fruits and honey is mentioned in the Quran, the bee is mentioned in the Quran. But when it talks about the bee and the worker bee, it shows that the female B is the worker. Even it has things like in Islam and hadiths and all these different things. It actually is written and said that if a fly were to be in like your water, your soup or whatever, if it only one wing is dipped, make sure the other wing is also dipped because one wing carries the disease, one wing carries the cure. Later on, science has found this to be true. And that's insane to me. That's something that like took me for a spin. Cause I was like, I couldn't believe that that was true. And then I Google it, look on the internet and boom, it's true. So it kind of goes to show like how miraculous the Quran is and how much it coincides with science. Even when it comes to science's understanding of the Big Bang, the Big Bang Theory, it's this explosion, this mass, this creation. But in the Quran, it also talks about this ever expanding, this explosion that Allah created the universe. And it's interesting because people will call it the Big Bang, we just call it, it's Allah creating this scenario. But people don't want to see the concision. And again, if it's written somewhere 1400 years ago and it's still the same from then and on, but they only thought about that 100 years ago, listen, I might have to believe, you know? And I think that's kind of how it really cemented in my head growing up. And I was like, wait, a lot of these make a lot of sense. It's scientifically and Islamically perfectly coincided with one another. Again, when it even it talks about honey, it talks about the antibacterial things about honey. And honey is one of the only foods that don't expire. So again, it gives you so much. Even when it comes to like relationships and kin, it even says not to marry your brothers and sisters. Basically, don't impregnate your brother or sister because again, it'll cause genetic defects. And we know this by looking at kings and queens and how they was acting. They all looked deformed and had so much genetic issues because they were mating with one another. They were trying to keep it in the blood. But again, that actually 
create genetic issues. And we only had figured that out after, but Islam had prescribed this 14 plus hundred years ago. So it kind of goes to show that Islam had the scientific knowledge and wisdom before science had even thought about it. So it made me realize that Islam and the Quran had this knowledge before we even learned about it scientifically. And again, even in the balance of nature, the Fibonacci sequence, how everything is so intricately designed, it cannot be an accident, how beautiful everything is designed, how we are in pairs, right? Everything is so brilliantly designed. There had to be a creator to all of these designs. Even if it comes to the human blood vessels, there's miles and miles and miles of blood vessels long in our body that never tangle. But if I put my headphones in my backpack and take them out, they are tangled like no end. But it's just how long, what? A foot, two feet, you know? So it's interesting to think, wait, all these blood vessels in my body that ran, run for miles and miles and miles long, that don't ever tangle. How perfect is the human design? One of the last things I'll talk about is the behavior of iron. So iron is said to have been something that's extraterrestrial basically, that it came down not from earth. It said that iron has come down from space. Within the Quran it even talks about it that way, that it's like an extraterrestrial thing. And we have noticed this in studying these magnetic fields that it doesn't react the same way as other things on earth. That's an earth mineral versus a space mineral. So iron is seen that way. So isn't it interesting that even in science later on, we're realizing that iron has different properties. It kind of goes to show that Islam already knew this. The Quran states this. So again, if you're someone who's on the fence or don't really know much about religion or faith or values in the Quran sense, I urge you to take a Quran and read through it. See all the scientific miracles, understand it. And it might seem scary, it might seem hard at first, but again, logic is needed to be in Islam. You have to have belief based upon logic. And if this is a view that can really help you out, please let me know if you want me to elaborate on this or we can even talk about it in the comment section down below and I really want to know what you think. And if there's other miracles in the Quran or other things that I have missed, please feel free to comment down below. And guys, again, I really do appreciate it. And inshallah, like this helps you, This you learn something from this video. And again, for me, it really helped me to understand how synonymous the science and Quran really are. Subscribe, follow, share, like, and send it to all your friends. I do appreciate the love and inshallah, I'll see you next Friday.